Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Jim McCormick with agmarket.net. And we are seeing just about everything lower except for the wheat market here after the big onslaught of reports that we got at 11 o'clock. Jim, let's break these down. Um, obviously, corn and soybeans are lower right now in corn. Maybe a little bit of a shock, maybe a big shock here to see record yield and production in that report, right? No doubt about it, Michelle. I think the trade was leaning to very pretty much either an un, un you know essentially unchanged yield number or even a slight adjustment down. This upward revision of what they did, um, I haven't seen the historicals, but I'm guessing it's one of the bigger upward revisions we've ever had in January. And there's no doubt about it, the trade got caught flat-footed, and the market's reacting to it. Um, you know, it's not what we needed to see. We already had a cumbersome supply. Um, this just adds to the burden. There was a few things, Michelle, that I would point out that maybe offset some of the bearishness. They did cut the harvested acres a little bit, mitigating a little bit of the increase in the yield. They also increased, increased ethanol demand as well as feed and residual, which also kind of mitigated it. So the actual ending stock number probably isn't as bearish, react, as, bearish as what the market's reacting to at the moment. No doubt. But where do you think we find the next support here? You know, 31 million bushels. We still have to get that worked in here. If that is a bit of a surprise. Well, I would hope that somewhere on this 450 zone, maybe a little bit below that's going to find some support. Remember, the September corn went down around that 447, 450 zone going into delivery. The December corn did the exact same thing. And now the March corn is going to test that right now. So I would hope that you find a little bit of support. I mean, let's face it, Michelle, this market is not what farmers want to see. And the reality is they're very, the, the fact is they're not well positioned for this report. And what I mean by that is we're seeing estimates up to 85% of this corn crop has not been sold by the farmer. And normally they've got at least half of it marketed by now. So, you know, this is not going to bring the mar grain to market. If anything, I think it's going to entrench them to try to hold on a little bit lower. So, Hopefully we can kind of wash this out today and then come out of the three day weekend and uh, with our argument, we price in the bearishness and maybe get some of a seasonal bounce. Yeah, sometimes you bottom a market when the news is the worst. So maybe that's the case here. I got to ask you, you probably haven't had time to go through the state by states, but where do you think the bigger yield came from? Like I said, I haven't seen the city, but, I say, but I'm going to guess it came from the eastern Corn Belt in general. I think that might have been a surprise a little bit in the west. But the east, our clients in the east have all along said in parts of Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, they had record yields, phenomenal yields. And I think kind of how the market got caught, Michelle, was during the fall, the, the west essentially harvest was relatively on time. We knew the west crop going into the November report. But here, the eastern corn crop was a really delayed harvest. And it turns out, my guess is, it was much bigger than anticipated. And that's why you saw the national yield get pulled up. Yeah. We did see a slight adjustment up in soybean yield and production as well. Ending stocks at 280 million bushels. Talk about how we got there and how bearish this might be. All right. Now, like I said, the you know, good, you know, the crop plain and simple just performed better than what we thought. The, you know, the yield number is definitely a little bit negative. Offsetting that was a reduction in the harvested acres. But, you know, you're adding to the ending stocks. Um, and the market's feeling a little bit of pressure. We could go down a little bit lower and test those summer lows, worst case scenarios. I would guess once we get through this digest it like the corn and kind of the shock of the market, we will come back and see how the weather is in South America. They did make some revisions to South America's crop, but they were relatively minor compared to some of the rhetoric. I mean, I think they're putting, Michelle, what, the, the South American Brazil crop around 157. I think that's still a little bit above CONAB. But you have private estimates in South America saying it's closer to 140, maybe even lower than that. So time will tell if that crop is that low as we find it. I think that hopefully will find so, will provide some support to the market. Yeah, I was going to ask you a follow up about the South American crop. But overall, you got to believe that the market's a bit disappointed with what we got from both Brazil and Argentina today on corn and beans. Well, that's it. I mean, the reality is this. Your carryout is over 200 million or your production, excuse me, between those two countries is easily over 200 million. Their previous record production was 185 a few years back. So the fact is their crop is not down enough to offset our increase in production. And that is why the market's reacting negatively to it. But, you know, like I said, once we get through this number, the shock of the number, we have a three day weekend. Hopefully we come in here and we'll see what the weather is performing right now. I have seen some maps that are arguing that parts of Brazil are going to trend back warmer and drier here in the middle part of January. So this crop is not done, and that could potentially give us a bullish story down the line. 
Yeah, a little bit of the key too, Jim, won't it be if we continue to see the market slide, if we get some demand that comes in that could help stem the tide because we haven't seen that so far on this pullback, have we? You nailed it, Michelle. We saw some really good sales earlier in the year and they just have not happened. A break in the pricing combined with maybe some weakness in the US dollar will definitely help bring some demand in. That's what it's gonna take right now. We now know the supply, the final numbers are in. So the reality is the only thing that's really gonna get this bull market moving is two things. Either the South America crop has gotta get a lot smaller and fast, or you've gotta just get to the point where the market gets cheap enough where essentially end users of the world say, hey, this is value, let's buy it, especially because of the uncertainty of the crop. Remember, the Safrina crop, Michelle, is the big crop in Brazil. They've yet to even start planting it. So, uh, you know, a lot has to be, you know, there's a lot, lot of water that's got to go under this bridge in South America to know this crop number they gave us today is going to actually come to fruition. Okay. Let's talk about wheat as well. Okay. Seeding's down to 34.4 million acres nationally on winter wheat. Probably not too much of a surprise there that we saw that pullback. Not so much. I mean, I think it was the, the the planning number is actually a little bit less than what the average trade guess was. I think it, you know going into the number, the debate was, you know, the pricing. The price has definitely fallen quite a bit since uh, the the peak panic buying highs that we saw at the beginning of the Ukrainian war. Uh, but you know, we let's face it, in the Midwest, we had a phenomenal fall, and the thought was potentially could we see a little bit more wheat acres get thrown in what we thought. As we found out, they didn't put that wheat in, and that's probably the most bullish story of uh, all the numbers we got today. Yeah, it is. Plus uh, ending stocks were down about 11 million bushels. Unfortunately, as we speak, Jim, the wheat market is starting to leak lower. I suppose we're just getting pulled down by corn and soybeans at this point, you think? More than likely, like I said, the wheat number is overall a little bit neutral. I would argue maybe slightly friendly, but as this is getting pulled down, as you mentioned, it's probably just because of what's going on in the corn and, and the bean market. I mean, a lot of people in this trade were hoping kind of for a slightly bearish report that we could get kind of a seller room or buy the fact reaction. You know, as we're recording this, this is obviously not happening. And, uh, you know, it's going to put some people in some tough positions right now. Uh, you know, farmers have got a lot of grain. And uh, now the question is, what are they going to do with it here as we uh, get into the latter half of winter? Yeah, have you seen the farmer selling first of year like you thought you were going to see or not? Because we normally get it. Right now, I don't think we saw a lot of it, Michelle. Like I said, our elevator contacts are telling us that they think up to 85% of this year's corn crop is still in the farmer's hands. And I think that could be a problem for the market. I mean, for people who want to see a rally, it's going to be tough because there is a lot of bushels overhead that are going to get forced to the market. Remember, the cost of the money this year is, is something that we haven't had to talk about. So for every producer that's holding on to that corn in the bin, it's cost them three, three and a half cents a month, just in interest alone. Beans, it's seven, eight, nine cents a month. So the, the clock's ticking, the bill is running up. And like I said, this market is just not getting the reaction the trade was hoping for today. But like I said, we have put the market lows in on bearish reports before. And, uh, you know, it's hoped to be maybe a little bit optimistic that maybe that's what's going on at the moment. Time will tell. All right. Thanks so much uh, for joining us, Jim McCormick with AgMarket.net. That is Markets Now.